All right, let's continue with the Project Euler here. This is number 25, the 1,000 digit Fibonacci number. Problem statement is the Fibonacci sequence is defined by the recurrence relation f of n equals f of n minus 1 plus f of n minus 2, where f of 1 is 1 and f of 2 is 1. Hence, the first 12 terms will be 1, 1, 2, 3, 5, 8, 13, 21, 34, 55, 89, 144. They start with 1, 1, then you add the previous 2 to get the next one. Move it up, add the previous two to get the next one. Move it up, add the previous two to get next, so on and so forth. You get the idea. The 12th term, f of 12, is the first term to contain three digits, 144. What is the index of the first term in the Fibonacci sequence to contain 1,000 digits? Ooh. All right, well, we'll code that up here. This one isn't too bad. It's pretty, pretty simple. But we are... C does not have types big enough to hold a thousand digits as far as i'm aware maybe there's a big int type that gcc has but i'm not using that so i'm not going to use it instead i'll use an array Ooh, or well a few arrays but we'll get we'll get the code going here we need something to print out the answer and i'm just going to include uh, the standard int types again because i i like those they're good so our answer to find what 1000 digits is our stopping point so i'm going to have a thing called digits Make it a thousand. That's the max number of digits we want to find for the Fibonacci number. We'll have our main void. So I had a couple things that I was thinking through, but I think the simplest way to do this, what I've done, is to use three arrays. So I'm going to hold the current Fibonacci number within one array, and then I'm going to have the previous two digits that we use to add up to the current Fibonacci number. They're also going to be kind of contained in their array. So I'm kind of going to have three running numbers for the current Fibonacci sequence all contained within their own arrays. But I'm going to make these you know, basically character length or unsigned 8-bit integers and call it, uh, well, I want to have fib. It's going to be an array as big as, you know, our digits. We want to find the first 1,000-digit Fibonacci number, so I'm going to have that. Um, but to calculate the current Fibonacci number, we need the previous two numbers in the Fibonacci sequence. So I'm also going to have um, I don't n minus 1 isn't really a valid uh, name, so I'm going to have n, I'll call it n1. We'll say the current fib is going to be fib of n minus 1 plus fib of n minus 2. So n1 here would stand for n minus 1. But I'm also going to have that be as big as digits, and we'll have n2, which will be as big as digits as well. Um, the only other thing is I'm going to initialize all these to 0. And I'm also going to have a temporary digit here just in case it goes above the 8-bit limit which they probably will yeah <laughs> i'll have a temp temp limit here um, this will calculate sort of get our current fibonacci number but you'll you'll see that in a bit so, um, i'm gonna have a carry value since we're going to be adding the previous two digits to get well we're going to be adding the previous two numbers to get the current number but i'm going to go through the fibonacci numbers digit by digit that's kind of why i have the arrays here so I'm going to have a carry value because if you add up two numbers and it's above 10, it's going to be two digits, and I'm going to have to split them up somehow. So I'm going to have a carry value to count as the remainder of addition that is above 10, if that makes sense. Uh, fib count here is just going to be like a counter, an index, an iterator that says, which Fibonacci number are we on? I'm going to start at 2 because the first couple are 1. Fib of 1 is 1, Fib of 2 is 1, but I'm going to say we're at the second sort of Fibonacci sequence. Okay, the last thing, I'm just going to have a regular, uh, we'll just say loop iterator if we want to loop through stuff. I'm going to call it i, just for like four loops and such. Okay, so since the first two things of the Fibonacci sequence, I'll call it like this. Fib1 is 1, and Fib2 is 1. I'm going to set our n-2 and n-1 to uh, 1. I'm going to do that first off, not x. So it'll be n1, n1, 0, index 0 is going to be 1. Or we can um, initialize things all in one line. Let's do n minus 2 equals n minus 2, 0th index equals n minus 1, 0 index equals 1. So the first digit of these arrays for n minus 2 and n minus 1 in our sequence are going to be 1. Okay, so I'll do this a little bit bad. People usually don't like seeing infinite loops, but we're going to end it, or at least I don't worry too much. We're going to use our iterator here. I'll do while i equals 0, um, i is less than digits. So for each loop iteration, we're going to go through every digit in our big, long 1,000-digit numbers. And i++. plus plus. To get the next Fibonacci number, we're going to add up all the digits 
for n minus 2 plus n minus 1. Instead of just adding the numbers directly, since we don't have, you know, a variable with large enough storage space in C to hold a thousand digits at once, at least not with what I'm using, we're going to break up each intermediate number that we get into up to a thousand digits. And we're going to add up both 1,000 digit numbers to get a new up to 1,000 digit number. But I'm going to get a temporary variable, which is adding up whatever digit we're on currently for n minus 2 and n minus 1. So n minus 2i plus n minus 1i. And then if we have a previous carry, I will add that as well before we get a new carry value. We'll say if we had a previous carry value, we're gonna add it here for the next digit. In case we have, you know, eight plus five is gonna be 13. The carry, we'll say the carry is like three, because it's over 10 or what, whatever, maybe it's one. However you do, long addition. <laughs> but we'll add up that one when we get to the next digit, right? So that's what the carry value is signifying. Um, but if we add them up, we wanna determine if there is a carry value or not for the next digit. So how do we get a carry value? We're gonna check temp. So I'll say if temp is greater than nine, then we kind of want to break it up and get a carry value here. So we're also setting, since we want to add up the two numbers to get our next Fibonacci number in the Fibonacci sequence, that's what temp is going to be standing in for. Temp is our temporary Fibonacci number before we add it into the final array of Fibonacci numbers here for the next one. Uh, but I'm going to, you know, set the digit in the Fibonacci array number here. So fib i, fib i is going to be temp modulo 10 to cut off that last digit. And then our carry will be temp divided by 10. So we're going to get the, if it's over two digits, if it's above 10. So if it is 10, then fib i will be zero and carry will be one. But if it's like a 12, then fib i would be 12 and carry would be one. You know, we're just separating the digits here. Um, else temp is nine or below so what am i going to do there we'll just set fib i to temp we don't need to worry about carry in this case because it'll be set to zero from above so we don't need to set it to anything it'll stay zero and we'll just add zero to the next one but in this case fib i will just be temp for our next fibonacci digit okay so this gets the next fibonacci number i guess i could put that here so we'll say it's fib of n minus two plus fib of n minus 1 to get the next number in the Fibonacci sequence. This is standing in for n minus 2 plus n minus 1 plus any previous carry since we're doing it single digit by single digit for addition. Get it into temp. If it's above 9, break it up. Otherwise, it'll equal temp. Easy enough. So that'll add up our current 1,000 digit arrays for the current Fibonacci number. Now we could end this for loop early whenever we hit a 0. Well, not when we hit a zero, but we, we could end it early if we were to calculate how many digits are in the current Fibonacci number. So you can make this a little more efficient and optimized, but I'm not doing it. This is more of a sort of simple brute force attempt, right? But it works. Um, but after that, we do have our current Fibonacci number. So I want to sort of move n minus two and n minus one forward. So I want to say n minus two is going to equal n minus one, and then n minus one is going to equal our current Fibonacci number. And then we'll calculate the next Fibonacci number from the new n minus 2 and n minus 1 values up here after we go through this loop again, right? So we'll do that. So for i equals 0, i less than digits, i plus plus again. We'll set n minus 2, which we called n2. This will be equal to n minus 1, which we call n1. We can just set, you know, all the values of the arrays equal to each other. So that's what I'm doing here. Then n minus 1 will equal our fib. So that's easy enough. So after we've done all this, we have gotten the next Fibonacci number, right? So we can increment our fib count to get the next, um, I guess, what the problem call it? The index. We want to get the first index that has 1,000 digits in the number. So this is our index counter. I'll just call it fib count. We got the next number here. And then what we can do is check if we reached 1,000 digits in the number. And the easiest way to do that is to check if our current Fibonacci number, um, if the last position, so position 1000, although since arrays are zero based for indexing, we'll do minus one to get the last position. If that one is filled, so if it's not zero, then we've reached our 1000, our first 1000 digit Fibonacci number. And then at that point, we can break out of the infinite loop, we've gotten our answer. So it's pretty simple. So then uh, you don't have to do this, but I'm just gonna print out the number. Um, since the way we're storing it here from 
sort of least significant byte to most significant byte in the array. It's gonna, the number is going to be stored backwards, so I'm going to print it out backwards to, to print it out forwards, if that makes sense. I'm going to print out the number in reverse because we stored it sort of backwards in the arrays while we're calculating them, just to see the number. So I'm putting number was stored backwards, uh, print it out in reverse. Yeah, just to see what it is. So this is before i equals digits, i greater than or equal to, well, no, digits minus one, right? <laughs> or we'll get a, a seg fault, we don't want that. i greater than or equal to zero, i minus minus. And then we can just print out our, uh, our digits here. So it was u, well, it's unsigned, so it'll be u. And print out fib i. Okay, and then after that, um, our final answer is going to be whatever fib count is for the first index. So I'll print out, that'll be on its own line. So let's put a new line. Fib count is an unsigned 16, but percent %u will still work for that, I think. I'll put index, or final answer, I'll put index though. We'll put index for that. I'll put another new line. And this will be fib count. And this should be our final answer. Okay, so that should be our, our full program there, our full answer. If I typed everything in right, which is never guaranteed. But we didn't get any errors, so that's good. I'll time it just in case. But it ends pretty fast, so 13, you know, milliseconds or whatever that is. Maybe not milliseconds, but yeah, 0.13 seconds, real time, 0.12 user, 0.01 system. Um, this is our big number. I know it's not printed out right, but it starts at this 6, and it ends up here at the 1. So we printed it out in reverse, however, so stored in the array, the 1 would be first and the 6 would be last, but we printed it out in reverse. But this is our full 1,000-digit Fibonacci number, the first one. The index for that is 4782, and that will answer our problem here, as you can see, 4782. So there we go. It's really, it's not too bad. It's only like 40-something lines. It's not that bad. Just the trick with these things for um, storing super large numbers in C is that we don't have like a long, 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 whatever variable, inf long to the infinite variable to hold all the digits. So the easiest way to find a place to store these numbers is just in memory, just like in an array full of single digits or what have you. I did uint dates, that's fine. We're not gonna deal with negative numbers for this problem, so unsigned didn't work. Fill a 1,000 digit array with your intermediate digits after you add them up. So yeah, a trick for adding up multiple large numbers, if they're both in arrays, just add up every element of the array and you'll get the equivalent of just adding the numbers together. So that's, that's pretty easy. And that is the answer for, you know, number 25, Project Euler. I always say Euler, but it's Euler. 1,000 digit Fibonacci number. Um, but yeah, that's it. I do hope you enjoyed. Hope you enjoyed watching. The next one will be problem 26, reciprocal cycles. So I don't know, they're, they're reversing bicycles or something on that. Not sure, but that'll be 26. That'll come up eventually. Maybe it'll be fun. We'll find out. But yeah, thank you for watching. I will see you on the next one.